for reminding being recorded. So I think I'm just going to start from last week. First of all, how I, if you didn't get to hear the recording, I really hope you'll get to get a chance, take the time to do it. It was on the mountaintops and the valleys. And I really felt like the Holy Spirit really gave me that message. It was very intentional. Um, every trial has a mountaintop. Every mountaintop is the end of the trial. Mm -hmm. And that's when you can look back and go, you know what? God was there. God is who helped me through this. And mm -hmm. if you went through your trial with God, then you are guaranteed you will get to the mountaintop. You are also guaranteed that your perseverance in God and your faith in God will grow. But it's only when you choose to believe to go, to your, go through your trial with him. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe that he's going to be able to be in your trial and that he's going to be the answer to your trial then when the when the end does come you will not have grown in your faith or your perseverance the transformation has to come through the trial that's where the transformation occurs your transformation is happening every single day you are a new creation a new creature every single day as god is transforming your mind we're not to be conformed to this world, but we are to be transformed by the renewal of our minds every single day. And the way we do that is by believing in him and going through whatever we are going through with him, because then he's able to make that transformation in us. Jesus's greatest transformation of all was at the cross. That's when he was transformed truly to who he truly is, which is God. And, but in human likeness on the earth. But when he went to Calvary, the Mount, Mount Calvary, he was on his mountaintop. And I think to me, that just is kind of amazing also, because he was, it was the mountaintop experience that covers every other experience that we will ever go through. His mountaintop is our, is our life. It's our life without sin. It's our life without illness. It's our life without guilt, with, with transgressions, our life without um, anxiety or grief. Um, and I, what I mean by that too is, I mean, we're gonna go through periods of grief or we're gonna go through periods of sadness, but they're never to hold us down. If we are being <laughs> by them and being held down by them longer than the period or the season that it should be, then that's, then that's a plot of the enemy. And we have, to, we have to recognize that and rise up because God doesn't want you to live like that. He doesn't want you to live in your past. He doesn't want you to live in your affliction. He doesn't want you to live in your guilt. So things can come into our lives, but we must let them pass. And we can let them pass by recognizing that Jesus took all of them. So I written down, I'm just gonna kind of read it because I wrote it down the way it was coming to me when I was, um, going over these, the plan for this Bible study. And it just says that Jesus Christ as our savior, he went to the cross. So remember, we have the choice at the beginning of class, weeks ago, months ago, when I said, we have to choose whether, whether God, whether Jesus is our Lord and our savior, or whether he is our savior and our Lord, because so many of us, we only walk with him as savior. We only walk with him with the plan that I will get to heaven. I believe in him. I believe what he did. So I'm going to heaven. But life here on this earth can be so much more amazing, over the top, filled with blessings, miracles, signs, and wonders. Um, but it's our choice to choose to, to believe and accept him as our Lord. And when a person, when, when we have a Lord, a Lord is someone that you obey. A Lord is someone who oversees you, takes care of you, wants the best for you, protects you, but then you need to trust in him. That's the only way he becomes your, your true Lord is to trust in him. So when Jesus went to the cross, he took every single thing, every single thing that negatively would affect you. He took it all with him on the cross because he doesn't want any of the negative things of the world to pull us down, to take us out. And so he took every single thing, but then by taking every single thing, he had to give us something 
in order that we could stand in that protection, in that victory. We have to stand in that victory. And the way that we are able to do that is because Jesus gave us the greatest gift of all, which is in John 14 and 16, he gave us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit within us is our victory. He within us is greater than the enemy and greater than anything the enemy can do against you. But it's he that is within you is greater than that. And he within you provides you with every single thing to live life to the fullest on the earth. And that's what we need to realize. Jesus took it all, all the negative, in order that we can have the Holy Spirit with everything positive, with everything that we need to cover any single trial that we will go through. If you look at what he has given you by being everything he is, when I say the four C's and then as his, that's huge. That's everything you will need in any situation. And then when Jesus tells us that the greatest thing of all over everything else is love, that's the thing that he also gives us. He gives us the fruit of the spirit and he gives us love. And when he's talking about giving us love, we already are so loved by God. He's not going to be talking about the love that God's giving us. He's talking about the love within us that we are supposed to give to others. Because it's in the category of the fruit, the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control are all things that, that are fruit that others are supposed to see. So when he says the greatest of these is love, love is the most important, powerful thing that you can do on this planet. So what I'm going to talk to you about tonight is the gifts that the Holy Spirit gives us, because that's really the closure of all that he gives us. I mean, you can read and you can hear more things about him and who he is, but all of them really fall into the category of those four C's as his and all the fruit of the spirit. Everything else falls into that category with the Holy Spirit. But then the gifts are something that are so amazing. And I wanna to explain to you um, tonight what I felt like I just got as an answer to no yesterday morning wait a minute i just have to get this right in my head because it was pretty amazing it was this morning it was this morning that i had yesterday i'd written down all my notes for this class and for some reason it wasn't clicking it just wasn't feeling like that excitement that i usually get when i come and talk to you guys i'm like excited i've got something that i want to say and i wasn't feeling that well this morning right before i got up I was laying in bed, not feeling like getting up yet. And all of a sudden the Holy Spirit just rearranged as I, as I started to think, this is what we need to pay attention to. The Holy Spirit tries to speak to us, but sometimes we just, we let the thought go away rather than allowing the thought to go down into our spirit. If you get a thought about something about God, dwell on it meditate on it let it get in there a little bit and see where he's taking you with it because as i did that this morning he changed up all my notes i mean i got up and i was like oh my gosh i gotta get to my notes right now i gotta cross out these things and add these things because it was like suddenly it was that excitement again that i know i'm supposed to have when i teach as a teacher you gotta have excitement for what you're teaching or the people who are listening are like it's no excitement for them. So I just, I just thank God every single time when he does this, because then I can just jump in and go, this is your message. So it's got to be exciting because it's from him. So what I wanted to say is, let's see, we are victorious already. The Holy Spirit is within us. Every single we at trial we go into, we were all, we are already at the place of victory. It's already was defeated at the cross. If you can look at every trial like that, then you can keep considering it as pure joy. But it takes effort and it takes believing. The greatest walk that you're going to walk with God is your choice to believe, to believe what he tells you in his word, to believe what he speaks in your spirit, um, just to believe in, in his promises that are always yes and amen. As you believe in them, your faith is going to grow. Okay. He did everything on the cross so you don't have to have it. 
And that's why you are considered more than a conqueror because you don't have to have this. this. And I, want to, I just want to make sure I'm going to the right places. And so I want to read quickly Galatians 3, verse 5 and 6. Galatians 3... Verse five and six, Galatians was written by Paul. It says, have you suffered so many things and experienced so much all for nothing to no purpose? If it really is to, if it really is to no purpose and in vain, then does he, God, Jesus, who supplies you with his marvelous Holy Spirit, who works powerfully and miraculously among you, do so on the grounds of your doing what the law demands, or is it because of your believing in and adhering to and trusting in and relying on the message that you heard? Thus Abraham believed in and adhered to and trusted in and relied on God, and it was reckoned and placed to his account and credited to him as righteousness, which was as conformity to the divine will and purpose thought and action. He acted, he trusted, he believed in what God told him and it was considered complete and total righteousness is who Abraham was considered. And so what, what I'm trying to get you to look at right there is that it's not, it says we are supplied with the marvelous Holy Spirit who works powerfully within us when we are believing. It says, does it happen because you're doing what the law commands, which is of the old and it's of the Ten Commandments and all the other laws? Or is it because you have believed and trusted in him? So what it comes down to is, yeah, it's all about believing and trusting in him. So when Jesus left his disciples, his di or before, right before, his disciples asked him, what is the most important thing that we can do while we are here on the earth? What are we supposed to do as believers, as believers? And Jesus said, all that you are required to do is believe. Because when you believe everything else that God has planned for you will come to fruition. Every wonderful work that God has planned for you will be there for you when you believe. Just like it says in Ephesians 2, it is not by our own works that we get to heaven, but it's only by his grace. And he does give us good works to do, but they're up to us whether we choose to do them or not. So it's all about believing. And that was the very beginning of class, how we started out. Believe. It's your choice to believe and walk with the Holy Spirit. So in in receiving the gifts of the Holy Spirit, now this is what was so given to me just in the last couple of days that really was amazed, changed my whole mindset, is that the gifts of the Spirit are given to you as you believe in him, as you believe in him. I was listening to a message by Joyce Meyer just the other day about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about that next week, talking about the evidence with the gift of tongues. But she was saying that in Mark 16, it tells us if you truly believe, then you are supposed to do all of these things on the earth. You're to heal, to cast out demons, you're to speak in different tongues, and you are to do signs, miracles, and wonders. And what she said, though, is that that is for every believer. But a lot of believers say, well, I can't do signs, miracles, and wonders. And she said, it's because they're not believing. It's all about the believing. I, if you say, I believe I am on this earth to do signs, miracles, and wonders. I am to heal others. If God approves, I'll be the, uh, I will be the tool the one who prays for that person. And if it's God's will to heal them, that's God's will, but I'll do it. And I will cast out demons. And Joyce example, used the best example. She said, I have cast out demons, but, I, but some demons haven't come out. She goes, I can't get the ones out when the people want to hang on to them. <laughs> and it's true. 
And if you have much study in the demonic, it really is interesting and is very true. Um, sometimes we have demons because we have opened up doors to demons. And I know some of you, this might be getting like a little wee weird, but it's true. It's in God's word and I'm just speaking it. And I've listened to so many messages after the last 24 years of my life that I've been teaching the Bible. And, and I feel like I've got some of it down pretty well. And um, so I'm going to share parts that I know are truths. And then if you ever struggle with them, either get in touch with me or read, find the places in your Bible. I, I'm always open for, you know, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Being rebuked. <laughs> no. I'm always okay. open if you know something that's different and you want to share that with me. But anyway, what she was saying is, yeah, you, you can open up doors. And as I heard her say that to the demonic, I felt like there was something I need to share with all of you tonight. Maybe you haven't closed doors yet. Maybe you truly have oppression, which could come out as depression. It could come out as a physical ailment. It can come out as anxiety because you're being oppressed for, by a demonic entity because of a door that you opened and you haven't shut yet. So I'm gonna tell you, share with you some of the doors that were opened um, that I opened when I was younger. And my mom opened them with me because she really didn't know that much about it. And, La and Lacey being 12 years younger than me, I don't think experienced as much as I did because my mom grew with the Lord. And by the time Lacey was old enough to do things, my mom, I think by then realized it was dangerous stuff she was messing with. One was the Ouija board. I mean, how many of us have done the Ouija board? I mean, when you're growing up, I know. And the Ouija board is very demonic. It's allowing spirits to come and be involved. When you are, as a, as a teenager or a young, a young you know, middle-aged kid, um, middle school, whatever, and you have your fingers on this Ouija board thing, you get all oogly, 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 you know, and you go, I can feel it and it's moving. Well, you're allowing demonic to really work in that presence right there. You have opened a door. If you have ever done that and never repented of it, do it. You still could be carrying the same oppressive spirit from the time that you did that. And you may not even know why you are a certain way in your life. And it could just be that. Mm -hmm. you, what I would do and what my mom and I did when we realized that we were doing things that were wrong, like the Ouija board. I mean, we burnt it, first of all. I remember my mom fixing this big fire. Lacey, were you there then? Okay. And we burnt the Ouija board. And, and we prayed over it. God, we repent of doing this. I ask for the blood of Jesus over myself and for a cleansing mm -hmm. of whatever door might have been opened. And you can pray mm -hmm. it in words, but something in that general prayer. The other thing that opens doors is horoscopes. How many of you just peek at the horoscope and go, ah, you know, it can't hurt anything. Oh, it says I'm having a wonderful day today. Or, oh, it says I'm going to be depressed. There's going to be something going on. I'm going to meet a person who's going to tell me something sad or whatever. Satan watches your every move. He watches when you read a horoscope. He knows that that's a way that he can manipulate in your circumstances, you have opened a door from a kind, a, a type of spirit that's of divination when you read horoscope. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you truth. So, and it says straight out in the Bible, do not do mm -hmm. horoscope. Do not do astrology, which is if you're not an astronomy is studying the stars. Astrology is when you're going, oh, this is going to be a bad week because my stars not lined up with my horoscope or my sign, signs are not of God. And I hate to tell, I mean, I don't hate to tell you this, but I know some of you may be going, oh, I, I like to talk about my sign. I'm a Leo and I'm this kind of personality. Well, mm -hmm. you are claiming whatever Leo is, a Taurus such as me could say, I am very stubborn. Do I mm -hmm. really want to be stubborn? No, mm -hmm. that would not be a quality of Jesus. Do not claim those things. Think about what doors you've opened. Tarot cards. Mm -hmm. Obviously, everyone should know that. And I did those. 
when I was probably in middle school, someone gave me that as a birthday gift. Mm. I thought it was really cool. Let's flip over the cards and see what we get. You're opening up a door. Mm -hmm. You do seances, you're opening up big doors. Um, When you walk tables, I don't know if any of you know about walking tables. Lacey, Mm -hmm. did you walk tables with us? Walking tables. My mom's family from the elders down used to walk tables. You'd get a table and it was a good sized table. You'd overlock lock fingers like that, touching pinkies or as much as you could around and you could get the table to walk. I mean, it mm. would lift and it's mm. totally demonic. I mean, wow. Jesus has no intent. He has no reason to lift tables. He has mm. no, you know, it's like if you're dealing with mm-hmm. something, something spiritual, that mm-hmm. is not what Jesus would have you do, then mm-hmm. shut the door. So Amen. Yes. Things, you know, even something in your house. I know that um, I had a close friend and we prayed together all the time and she got really freaked out about dream catchers. You know what the Indian dream mm-hmm. catchers are? Yeah. You know, they're woven and they have, it's called the eye of God. Sometimes they call mm-hmm. that. Center. And and so I was talking to my great aunt Barbara. Now she is the one that's the unbelievable amount of God's wisdom was in her that I could ever imagine. She is this one who is my mentor. And she is that, they called her the tongue talker, water walker lady. And yeah. she told me, if you have something in your house and you're feeling kind of weird about it, I didn't. Tanner loved buying those. He loved stuff about the Indians and he loved buying the authentic dream catchers. Mm -hmm. Is he, is he getting them to try to catch dreams? No, he's not. And so my, my aunt Barbara told me, pray over it, lay hands on it, pray about it. Say, Mm -hmm. I really, there is anything demonic in this. I rebuke it. I cast it out in the name Mm -hmm. of it. And then if you still have ill feelings about it, get rid of it mm-hmm. get rid of it but if it's something like the kachina dolls do you guys know what those are the, the they're indian dolls they were sculpted out of wood and i know you've all oh they're yeah really beautifully done and so our boys both used to like to collect them and my friend had a thing about those too you need to burn them you know and <laughs> and so i again talked to my my aunt and she said no she goes unless you're like worshiping them or unless you're mm-hmm. Feeling right. that oppressiveness in them. She said, no, mm-hmm. pray over things. Don't get all freaked out. Mm-hmm. I did a lot of freaking out in my younger years. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm in my thirties because I listened a lot to a couple of my friends. I mean, about everything, you know, everything was scary and, and, you know, get rid of everything, burn everything, but, but you don't need to do that unless some things mm-hmm. are demonic target. Mm-hmm such as the tarot cards, the Ouija board, those are truly demonic Mm -hmm. targets. But some things Mm -hmm. have had a history if they've been used a certain way, but are not the targets that are just of of demonic. Mm -hmm. You need to be the one to use your discernment. All of us have discernment. That is the knowledge of good and bad, evil and good. Mm -hmm. If you get a weird feeling, then do something about it. But for... But definitely shut your doors. If you have doors that are still open that mm-hmm. you have never prayed about, pray about them, close them up. Say they're gone. And when you close them up, make sure you always fill yourself up. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for- Sally, if I could just say one thing. I just remember my mom always teaching us about that, about Ouija boards and all that kind of stuff. And I was just never, even like the signs and people would say, oh, are you a Leo? And I said, no. And I, I really probably don't really know, like, as far as what I was, you know, I would just say, no, I, I'm, my sign is Jesus. <laughs> I, didn't know. I was like, no, my sign's Jesus. And they're like, well, no, when's your birthday? And I'm like, yeah, I don't really want you to say that. Cause I was always so worried about, you know, wow. somebody, like putting something on me or something, you know? And then my friend wanted to, um, I was at actually at a dinner party at their house and they were going to take the Ouija board out. Uh-huh. And I'm like, I'm just telling you guys right now, if you take it out, I'm leaving. I love you, but I'm leaving. You cannot <laughs> take it out. I know it's your house, but I got to go. If you're going to take that out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so good. Good for you. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. But, um, 
my friend, she actually, her daughter, they went into when we were in Target and stuff. And it was, it was so crazy because she ended up buying like a book on witches and stuff and like getting in. I'm just like, you, you, I told her, I'm like, you shouldn't be getting that kind of stuff. You're opening doors that you don't even know that you're doing. I said, that is not something you want to be. And they're laughing about it. You know, they were just basically like, Oh, you know, they're laughing. And that's like a big deal. Yeah. Oh, it's a big deal. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Because you reminded me a couple more things that, and I know some people, probably not going to like this, but but after Harry Potter became so popular, Mm -hmm. so many kids became became involved in Wicca and witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Because what would happen is if they went on their computers and looked up sorcerers or looked up witches, it would lead them straight to Wicca. It's set up Mm -hmm. like that. And then it gives them the true um, steps to take to become Wiccan. And it was so enticing to young people to be able to, young people, you want to be able to do wonderful things, even though Mm -hmm. they're not true. It's still within you as a kid to do wonderful things like, Mm -hmm. you know, like the sorcerers and Mm -hmm. and the number of Wiccans um, increase so much because of the Harry Potter books. Yeah. Well, and on, on, on the Harry Potter best on, witch. on the Harry what? Potter website itself, if you went to the Harry Potter website, you could click on links on the website that would take you straight to Wicca um, websites. Wow. Yeah. On That's the because Harry Potter Rowling's website. is a self-professed witch. Right. The author is a witch. Right. Right. I was never into it. Yeah. Anyway, I don't I mean to go off on another tangent. No, it's okay. To consider, you know, just mm-hmm. to consider who's getting, uh, who is becoming Lord in the situation mm-hmm. when you're reading these things or you're doing these things, or mm-hmm. that's the difference between having Jesus as your Lord or a Satan as your Lord. And I know we don't like to think of it that way, but so often that's what we do. I mean, when we allow I'm kind of changing subject now, but when we allow worries to consume us, Mm -hmm. always from the enemy, always, then he has become Lord over your life. Mm -hmm. He's tormenting you. He is getting you exactly where he wants to be. Only Mm -hmm. 90, did I tell you this? 90 to 91% of the things that we worry about um, do not come Mm -hmm. true. 90 to 91 percent do you realize how many nights you have stayed up worrying about things and it's only has a nine percent chance that it's going to come true Mm. that's that's why we just we need to be thinking about what we're thinking about all the time but Mm. i better get going because i'm not doing i i i went off target but i hope that kind of helps you we need to we need to close doors from the enemy we need to not leave Mm -hmm. doors open we need to get ourselves to a place that we are so filled with the Holy Spirit that anything that is not of him, we don't even want it in us. Mm -hmm. We don't want it in us. We don't want to be reading it. We don't want to be hearing it. We don't want, Mm -hmm. a lot of the news literally is from the enemy. A lot of the news, a lot of this COVID stuff was totally fear-based and Mm -hmm. totally of Satan. Mm -hmm. I mean, just fear, fear. People were racked with fear. And then people are wondering how come that so many are getting sick when the main reasons that you will get sick is when you have fear. Right. Mm-hmm. Communities go Absolutely. on when you are fearful. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. and it's all, it's all biblical. I mean, that's mm-hmm. why God tells us, do not fear, do not worry, do not, because he knows how it's going to affect us. So mm-hmm. moving forward to, um, to the gifts of the spirit is that what I've realized is that the gifts come to you, you become more aware of the gifts as you believe in your walk with the Lord. So I have to tell you, so my gift I know is teaching. I know that. Mm -hmm. But it didn't get transformed within me or revealed within me until I forgave my dad. Mm -hmm. I forgave my dad. It was about 27. No, it was just about 24, 25 years ago is when I forgave my dad. That was that huge story. So I'm not going to tell the whole story, but after not talking to my dad for 10 years, 
forgiving him, mm. having instantly a wellspring of God to where within two months, I started teaching Bible study classes. And I started being an intercessor at our church, which is someone who prays for, for people. Um, mm -hmm. Because God could give me the gift fully when I had emptied out of the junk that was keeping God from coming to me, mm -hmm. especially bitterness or unforgiveness. That's just one cause or one thing though that can keep the full power and the presence of the Holy Spirit within you is unforgiveness. But it's also if you are a, a continual, what it's called when you lie all the time, that's something that absolutely will keep his gifts from being manifested was the word I was looking for mm -hmm. within you. If you have something that you know is not of God and you won't submit it to God, God can't give you the gifts that he wants to give you. Mm -hmm. And it's just that plain. And so mm -hmm. we look at the gifts. So what I'm going to turn to, and I'm going to do this all fairly quick, quick, quickly tonight, because we're already zooming through time. Um, so in 1 Corinthians 12, okay, let me make sure I got this. 1 Corinthians 12, and I'm not going to read the whole thing because it would just take too long. So I'm going to pick out some of the pointed scriptures. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 1. Now about the spiritual gifts, the special endowments of supernatural energy, brethren, I do not want you to be misinformed. Okay, this is Paul speaking. He's talking about all the gifts. So, and then we go to here, it says, verse seven, but to each one is given the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. You already have the Holy Spirit within you, right? God wants to give you the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, but there may be things that are blocking it. My mm -hmm. gift, which is teaching, was completely blocked until I forgave my dad. Mm -hmm. Then it just like flowed. So we have to be paying attention. Is there something stuck in you still that is preventing you to be all who God wants you to be? Because the completion of the Holy Spirit within you is really the manifestation of the gift or gifts. You can have more than one gift, but that's where he is completing you. Because in the gift, this is what happens. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Holy Spirit the evidence, the spiritual illumination of the spirit that is for good and for profit. So it means that he's giving you a gift that's going to be good and profitable for those who will receive from it. So it's something that's a completion of who the Holy Spirit is within you. He wants you to have the gift so that you can be who God originally created you for that's going mm -hmm. to be good for someone else mm -hmm. but what could be blocking it that's what we need to seek so it says to one is given in and through the holy spirit this power to speak a message of wisdom okay a message of wisdom sometimes you just feel you can hear you can be talking about god and suddenly you have something very insightful within you that you feel like God wants that person to know for them to be able to go forward. And that's a word of wisdom. So we can have a gift like that where it comes um, more often than other people have it. We can all speak wisdom into people, but if you're one that just um, uncommonly knows how to speak wisdom into people, that's a gift of wisdom. And to another, they have power to express a word of knowledge and understanding according to the same Holy Spirit. Now, a word of knowledge is, is, can be summarized in different ways. A word of knowledge is a knowing of something from the Holy Spirit. Like maybe you lost your keys. I know we've talked about this before. And so many of us, I know, just go, okay, Holy Spirit, help me find my keys. You find your keys and that is, that's knowledge. That was a gift of knowledge. But even a more powerful gift of knowledge is when you are praying with someone and you suddenly have a download that you know something about that person that you would not have known otherwise. Mm -hmm. like, like God will tell you that person has unforgiveness in their heart. That's what keep, what's keeping them. 
from receiving their answer to prayer. Mm -hmm. Or like a pastor of mine, um, I got up, I don't know, every night for about a week because the Holy Spirit put him on my heart to pray for his wording. He said, I do not have compassion for people. He said, I just don't. But that isn't so not biblical. If we're supposed to imitate Christ, who is probably what the most compassionate person there was who walked on the planet, then a pastor of a church should be compassionate. And so when he said that, it's like the Holy Spirit pricked me to where mm -hmm. I would up every night and praying for this pastor till suddenly mm -hmm. I got a word of knowledge. The word of knowledge was that his dad had never paid attention to him. His dad didn't give him any kudos or any, mm -hmm. so he would come Affirmate. to his dad and be excited about something. His dad would disregard him. His dad was not compassionate. So this pastor chose because it hurt his feelings. He blocked it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be compassionate. My dad wasn't compassionate to me. I didn't learn how to be compassionate. I'm not going to be compassionate. Anyway, then the hardest part is when you get a word of knowledge, you got to go tell the person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I went to him and I just told him the whole story straight out. If you're, your truth will always set you free. I mean, even in those situations, speak your truth from your heart with love. Mm -hmm. And he started to cry. And he said, you're exactly right. And I prayed with him. And a couple weeks later, I received a letter from him. He said it completely broke off that it was a, demo, it was a demon of, oh, I don't know, what's the opposite of compassion? I mean, it just had stopped him up. It had clogged him up. And once he was free of that, he said it changed his whole life. Mm. But, you know, so that's a word of knowledge. That's a gift. And I'm going to explain to, to you how you may be that may be your gift so you get that a lot or you may only get it once or twice or every now and then and i'm going to explain to you why that is okay and then in verse nine to another person he may give a wonder working faith by the same holy spirit i mean a wonder working faith where like other people are going that cannot happen but yet you are going this is god i absolutely believe it in my heart I feel it in my heart. When I got prayed over um, to be healed of the thyroid disease, I knew that I received a healing. So I disregarded what anyone else said to me. I was so filled with a faith that that faith um, manifested God's power into my situation and I was healed. But it took the faith. So that was a time that God used you know, gave me that extra amount of faith that I needed to believe in order for that to be accomplished. But he wants us to have faith for anything and everything that we are praying for, especially like our mountains. Speak to your mountains. Remember, speak, speak to your mountains and, and you can cast them into the sea. Okay, and then to another, the extraordinary power of healing by the same spirit, the Holy Spirit. So I had chosen to be an intercessor too at the same time I chose to teach Bible study. I, I intercessed for probably a couple of years. I prayed for different people for healing, for emotional healing, for reconciliation in families, for whatever people come to you for prayer. And three different people had back pain at different times. And when I prayed for them, they were healed. And it's like, why? Why did God give me that ability through him? He's the one doing it. But why did he use me for just backs? I don't know, but he did. But we're to never quit praying for healing. It says in Mark 16, we are to go out and heal the people. We are to do that. It's God who does it or not. But I realized as I spent time doing it, it wasn't my true gift. I didn't have a passion for it like I did for teaching. So as you start walking, though, more with the Lord, as you start giving up the negative and in believing in his truth, he will start revealing to you and giving you the passion for what is truly your gift. And you may think, well, why do I only have this gift? I don't want to just have words of wisdom. I want to have healing gifts. But if you go ahead and read this whole chapter, which I'm not going to read, it says that every single part of us makes up the whole body of Christ. 
There is not one thing like the ear is not better than the nose or mm -hmm. you know, the finger is not better than the toe. It's every single one of us, God has appointed us to do something because of how we have been created. And he's usually using your strength of how he created you to be the best at that gift. Mm -hmm. And that's the one he'll put your passion toward. To another, the working of miracles. When you pray for something, it's absolutely miraculous. I mean, and we know those miracles are something that happens like that. Healing is something that takes time. If you say, oh, I received a miracle, that means it happened that night at that moment. But a lot of people get that confused. You can still be healed, but it doesn't have to be a miracle. It doesn't have to be at a, a drop of a dime or a moment's notice. And that healing is still being manifested. So don't ever give up. That's why mm. we never give up. You need to believe that you, are, that you can and should be healed. Um, the other thing is to another is prophetic insight the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose. Prophetic insight. Prophetic insight means God gives you a word for somebody um, that's going to make a change in them. So this is a great example. So crazy that it happened to me just a week ago. I was praying with one of the young adults at our church and she had contacted me about three weeks ago telling me that the Holy Spirit had put her me on her heart and said that the Holy Spirit told her that I would be someone that she needs to listen to. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to be praying for you because you don't just jump in and go, okay, let me get a word. Let me think, you know, well, I mean, unless God just does that, but normally it's not like that. It's like, okay, I'm going to be praying about you. I'm going to be paying attention, paying attention. God said, I'm supposed to do it. I'm going to do it as best as I can, listening to God. So then last week, I felt like I was supposed to have lunch with her. I made an appointment to have lunch. We went and had lunch. We're having lunch, talking about life, talking about recipes, etc. And suddenly I started just feeling God telling me to speak into her. So I started speaking into her. I said, God, I said, right now, God is just speaking into me that he wants you to know that he loves you exactly as you are. You do not need to strive to be somebody different. You do not to be have to strive to be equal or to do something as well as somebody else. He wants you right where you are right now and to just walk with him. And as I said that, I said, you are to walk with him and to talk with him like the song. And I said that to her. Well, suddenly she got big tears rolling down her cheeks. And a few minutes later, she said, oh my gosh, Sally, that song is the song that my mom used to sing to me all the time when I was a little girl. Now, only God would download that into my heart. Yep. Only God would know mm -hmm. what she needs to hear. Mm -hmm. And also for her, she knew it was a confirmation then that my words were truly from God because he gave me that song. Mm -hmm. And I almost didn't say it because it seemed so corny to me. He wants to walk with you and talk with you. And I even kind of hummed it, you know, but it was so, it was that one thing that was God's pinpoint word that was going to touch her heart. Yes. So we need to be listening and we need to not be timid about those things. Sometimes God <coughs> literally does give you a word for somebody and you just don't feel brave enough to share it. Share it. Share it. What are they going to do? Tell you they don't believe it? Well, I mean, whatever. It's up to them. But mm -hmm. do what God puts in your heart to do. Okay, I'm getting close to the end. Um, the other is the ability to discern, that have distinguished or to distinguish between the utterances of true spirits and false ones. If someone's speaking or they're speaking about God or you're just being around someone that doesn't make you feel right, then kind of pay attention to, should I spend more time with this person? I don't know, I'm not feeling it. I, there was a lady at the track when I go, the racetrack, when I go with my husband, she and her husband, especially her husband would invite Joe and I over to their trailer every now and then to barbecue. I did not feel comfortable. Everything in me was like, there's something not right. 
And then they asked us over for dinner another night and I told Joe, I'm not comfortable. Well, a couple days later, we were up um, talking in a group together and she said, I'm atheist. And instantly, see, that was my spirit. The Holy Spirit was just saying, he doesn't want to even be with someone who's claiming that. Now, God, of course, wants you to be able to speak truths into people so they become believers and Christians. But in this situation, there was something that God didn't even want me to be involved in. Mm -hmm. He didn't want me involved in it. Mm -hmm. So um, he kept me out. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to that instinct within you. Pay attention if you go into a home and it doesn't feel right, then maybe you shouldn't be in there. You know, just that's a discernment. Okay, and then let's see, to another various kinds of unknown tongues. And that's what we're gonna really talk about next week is the difference between the gift of tongues and the baptism of the Holy Spirit with tongues. There is a difference. And I never realized it until the Holy Spirit showed it to me today. And what he showed me is that when, first of all, when we have gifts, it says that every single gift is for the good and profit of others, right? Mm -hmm. When you're praying in tongues, speaking in tongues, unless you have an interpreter, they don't know what you're speaking. So it's a different gut, it's a different tongues that they're talking about with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The gift of tongues means that if you are in a group and you have the gift of speaking in tongues that is already planned by God that there will be an interpreter mm -hmm. to interpret the tongues, then that gift of tongues is beneficial and good for someone else to hear because there's been an interpretation. Mm -hmm. That is considered the gift of tongues. When you are one who can go to a meeting, a church meeting, and you pray in tongues, knowing you know in your heart there's going to be an interpretation there. That's different. And so that's a gift. So we're going to talk more about that next week. It says all of these gifts. Oh, sorry. And then to another, the ability to interpret the tongues. So when I was in my 20s or maybe even my te teens, I was at a um, Christian, it was like a conference, and someone started speaking in tongues. And I immediately, I got this download of an interpretation and I spoke it. I spoke it just as it came. And it was so interesting. I, I could tell, it wasn't my words. It was definitely God words. I've never had that again, but it happened once. So we're going to talk about those gifts that happen once or every now and then, but we're going to talk about the gifts that's your gift that you need to be walking in and allowing the Holy Spirit to manifest within you. So it says all these gifts, achievements, and abilities are inspired and brought to pass by one and the same Holy Spirit who apportions to each person individually exactly as he, the Holy Spirit, chooses. So what I'm trying to, I guess, really make, um, the, make or have you understand so that you choose to believe everything that comes from God's word is truth. And as you choose to believe it and to believe it and to believe it and start getting rid of those things in your life and within your heart that are not of God and that keep you from walking fully with the Holy Spirit, when all that is cleaned out and you start to walk in your gift, it becomes so powerful. And God then can use you to your fullest because he is using you for the good of others. Yes. So anybody want to say anything before I pray? You guys all good? Do you want me to tell them about that dream I had the other night? Yes. Okay. Because okay. we were talking about this and Sally said I should share it because it was a mountaintop experience. So um, the other night, I don't know if, if it was like a vision, a dream. It felt like I was really like there, but I actually was having a conversation with God and God was saying to me, who do you, who like in your life, do you want to ask me to be their Lord and savior? So basically I was going through my head, thinking about all the people that I 
knew that I wasn't sure if they had accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. And it was like I was pleading with God and every single person I could think of that I wasn't sure. I was just saying this person and this person and this person, and like my friend from Turkey and, you know, all these names. And, and this is in her dream. Yeah. And so it was really interesting because when God was talking to me, it wasn't regular English. It was like old, like biblical English. It was like sounded different. And so as I was naming off all these people, it was like I was pleading for God, you know, please, you know, I want these people, I want them to accept you. I want us all to go to heaven. And so I was just pleading, pleading, pleading. And then after I finished saying all and everybody I could possibly think of, he said, and I can't remember the exact language because it was a different wording, but it was to the, um, it was, so be it, is what he said to me. That's so nice. be it. But it was in a, a different kind of the way he would say it in a biblical way. But yeah. So I was like, and then I was immediately awake and I was like, oh, thank you, God. All these people I'm worried about, they're going to accept you. My friend from Turkey who thinks he's a Muslim is going to accept you. I don't know how he's going to do it. But you're going to put someone in his life and thank you, God, that those people are all going to be saved. And that's just the yeah. way it is. And, you know, and what's so awesome is in that he deposited faith into you that when you woke up, you just absolutely believed it. Yep. I thank mean, you, God. Those people are going to be right. saved. <laughs> Amen. Well, yeah, it was pretty cool. Absolutely. All right. I'm going to end in prayer. Thanks, Lace. Dear Father, thank you so much for tonight. Thank you for all of these sweet ladies, Lord God. Thank you for our hearts to be able to be transformed by you daily, Lord. You want to do it daily, that we no longer want to conform to this world, but we want to be transformed into who you want us to be, God, that mm -hmm. you have an incredible plan for us, greater than we have ever imagined. And it's going to be filled with blessings and signs and miracles and wonder, Lord God. And we are going to be able to pray and move the mountains, Lord God, because our faith is going to grow exponentially, Father. So mm -hmm. God, help us help us to choose your ways yes. help us to walk in your ways help us to to rely on you holy spirit to be our strengthener to be all that we need and to know that you within us is greater than any temptation that the enemy mm -hmm. can throw at us mm -hmm. and any thought that he can try to capture us in lord god that holy spirit you are greater than that and we are more than conquerors because of it so we give you all the glory and all mm -hmm. the praise and we thank you. Just come in hallelujah, hallelujah, into hallelujah. us and just grow us and just bless, bless us and bless each of these ladies and protect each one and protect their families. And thank you for hearing all of our prayers. And we pray this in Jesus' precious name. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Amen, you guys. Amen. I know, Amen. I know that was kind of a long yeah. one. Sorry, I just wanted to. It all out. I'm so glad I went on. I love you guys. I love you, Sally. That was so good. <laughs> oh, thanks, I, I, I miss you guys. <laughs> thank you. I nice to see you all. All, hugs. all right. Thank so you, Sally. Good. Bye. 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 Sally, I wanted to ask. Yes. Diane, where'd you so go? So, what do you think about yoga? Oh, you know what? I think it's the same thing. I've talked to, like my Aunt Barbara said. Okay. I mean, if they're doing chants and you're supposed to repeat chants, like, yeah. but I, when I go, I do yoga. And okay. I, I love the stretches. I love it. And the only word yeah. that I hear at the end is namaste. Me That's too. Namaste. I just go, thank you, God. Me, I do. I do the exact same thing. You're so oh, funny. Yeah. I do the exact same thing too. Yeah. Well, I, you know, and you know what? Else? Yeah. Like during the relaxation part, when you're supposed to lay there and meditate, I just pray the whole time. So yeah. do I. I don't. Or I yeah. just. I mean, just quiet. I just quiet my brain, and I just, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then, so what about what about like? Um, I heard this one guy talk about like his chakra. What's that? Oh, I know, but there is um. There's certain parts because of the Because it was really actually interesting. And I really actually, when he said it to me, it was about this thing about um, being a people pleaser and certain things that he was talking about, like your chakra and about, I mean, it, it, it 
it, it, it really struck me as interesting. And I, I would say I'm a pretty good judge of that when I feel I could feel yeah. like a spirit. I can feel it really easy. Yeah. Yeah. So I have, I don't, I haven't studied a lot on that, but I yeah. talk about that and, and, and that your body is, I mean, I think there's so much in our body that we don't understand. Sure. And it's, and it is divided into, there are different parts of your body that will respond to different things. Yeah, I agree, but I don't really give weight to it. I mean, I, I just saw it and it, and I, it just sort of like was interesting to me, but I'm like, oh, I'm not like studying, you know. Yeah, that, well, I, you know. crystals. Some people spiritually, I mean, are like practically pray to, to crystals. Oh yeah. And I have crystals. My son loves crystals. <laughs> I have lots of crystals, but I'm, I just, I'm amazed by how they are formed because mm-hmm. of all the information of how crystals are formed. But yeah. I, take the, I never consider them as being, oh, this is going to be my, you know, my way to have peace or my. Right, and, right. Or it's going to bring me good luck or yeah. I have, you know. Well, yeah. I, I just, we just have to be careful of when we start making things like idols that things. Sure. Like, I agree. I agree. Yeah. You know, cause it's like the same thing. Like when people say, you know, Oh, it's the devil. It's the devil. It's the devil. It's like, everything is not the devil. Everything could be like a decision you make or your willpower, or, yeah. you know, it's not the devil that made you run the red light. I mean, yeah, you, did exactly. it you did it, you know, I know. <laughs> it's like, Hey, everything's not the devil. Right. We have a lot of flesh involved. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly anyways but yeah anything else bring it I, it I love here learning about stuff too you know but oh yeah no I was um oh I do have to say that I know it was just so I, I was so meant to be on it it's like it's confirmation because I had my therapy appointment today with my counselor Good. and um I got on this topic and of course I started crying and then she got up and she did about no, you're a new creature in Christ Jesus, and this is a different way. And she used the same scripture, what you just said tonight. And I was just like, oh my gosh, that's just like so, like, constantly gives me confirmation, which I'm just, I don't know, I guess I'm a confirmation kind of person. Like, I really need to have it, you know? I know. But I know it's from the Lord, you know? It's like confirmation from people, but it's from the Lord, you know? Yeah. No, it is. I know. It's so good. Yeah, it's so good. Oh, I'm glad. So. Yep, yep. I got your card. Thank you. That was so nice. Oh, good. Yeah, it was precious. Thank you. Oh, good. I know. And just keep on smiling. Oh, yeah. I got you. I had to unmute myself. uh, Olivia, Gabriel's sister, Olivia, she had her baby. And I went to spend um, two hours with her today to hold her baby. And I just held her baby all day or for, you know, the couple hours. And he's so cute. Oh, that's the best. It was so great. And I was just like praying over the, or his name's, um, uh, oh, I can't even think of it. Merrick, Merrick. Oh, Merrick. That's Merrick, cool. yeah. And so, of course, you know, I'm just like praying over. And I'm, I was sort of thinking like, you know, how my mom would, my mom's in heaven and then, um, you know, now it's a new baby and I don't know. It was just so Aww. beautiful. And I was just like, I was just so, I felt really blessed. Oh, I love, so, I love that. I did too. It was great. God wants to bless us all the time. We just have to keep watching. That's right. All right. I love you guys. Okay, love, love you guys. Me. Shannon, okay, what were you going to say? Bye. So anyways, I'm piggybacking on you, Lacey. Cause oh. you know me. Okay. And so Easter Sunday. So prior to Easter Sunday, when the news ad came through the mail, I saw on the back of an ad was Refuge Church was having their big Easter service at Sunken Garden. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just happened to slide out, and I'm like, "Oh, this looks interesting." So I'm like, "You know what? I'm going to go to that." So I'm going to make Rich go with me. Yeah. So, this is something that Lacey knows. This is so out of my character. Oh, yeah. Is that Easter or Saturday comes and it rains. Mm-hmm. Oh. And Rich was planning on working on Saturday. But because it rained, he had to work Sunday. Oh. Oh. So guess what I did? Did you go without I went him? by myself. <gasps> Yay! Good for you! Yay! It's so 
out of my character oh. to go somewhere like that all by myself, didn't care, nothing. That's nothing. Not I tried to almost talk myself out of it. And I'm like, no, I have to go. And I went and I ended up finding friends to sit with and ended up being just the most beautiful day. It was oh, yay! awesome. Good yeah. job, Shannon! <laughs> yay! Yay! I did it. I did it. I stepped out of the box. <laughs> good. Hooray! Is there a good so. spirit filled church in this area? Is Do there we? what? Is there a good spirit filled church in this area? I want to try Refuge Church. I haven't tried that yet, but I go, to, is it? I go to a couple of It's what? in a Margot, where? <laughs> I'm sorry, a where? A Tascadero, Paso Tas Robles. Yeah, oh. it's in a Tascadero, just south of Paso Robles. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Nor north of San Luis Obispo. So many of these churches are dark inside and... Um, is there any that are light? It's <laughs> oh, the, like the times that I've gone, it's like it's been outside. And then this one was downtown in their big city park. They had a big stage set up. They had chairs everywhere. They had a big breakfast Wonderful. before. It was, yeah, it was, there was like over 100 people there. Oh, I'm just nice. so glad you went. Good yeah. for you. So, it ended up being a perfect day after that. <laughs> God just has called you. He's just doing stuff in your life because mm -hmm. I mean, once Lacey like had asked you to come to Bible study and you just, I don't know. He, he just, when, once he calls you, you just, you just have kept, you've kept coming. I mean, I do. I do. I really enjoy it. I yeah. really, really enjoy it. I'm so glad. It's so good. Yeah. Just, I don't know. We all, we all yeah. make stuff to go to like that that's good for us you know and well it's positive too and it makes mm -hmm. you think of things and and not dwell on the negative because like Lacey knows it's like I dwell a lot a lot on the negative yeah 